Hi, welcome to module number one, which is focusing on the parts of speech. Now it's very important for us to be able to identify our six uh, most common parts of speech, which are the noun, the pronoun, the adverb, the verb, the preposition, and the conjunction. We need to identify those basic six parts of speech first before we actually implement our grammar and punctuation in later modules. So again, I want us to form a basis um, for our foundation for grammar and punctuation that we'll learn later on in different modules, but we have to be able to identify these six parts of speech first. So again, our first module will cover the parts of speech. Now in this particular module, I have three different lessons that go under this one, and this particular lesson will be focusing on the first two parts of speech, which are the noun and the pronoun. And like I mentioned just a few seconds ago, we have six major parts of speech that this particular module will focus on. The noun, the pronoun, the verb, adverb, preposition, and conjunction. Now we're going to start with part of speech number one, which is the noun. Before we start identifying nouns and sentences or word groups, we need to learn or know what a noun is with a basic definition. So we can say a noun is a word that names something, whether that something is a person, a place, or thing, or it can be an actual idea, something we can't see or physically touch. And also, a noun can function as a subject in a sentence, an object in a sentence, or as a possessive in a sentence or word group. So let's talk about the three functions of a noun, which I just mentioned in the previous slide for you. Our first function of a noun is it can function as the subject of a sentence. Let's look at an example that a sentence that I have here. Ted lifts weights. Now in the next module you will actually um, learn how to pick out subjects and verbs and sentences. However, I want to give you kind of a, um, a little first glimpse into what the subject of sentences um, are in sentences. So let's look at the, the sentence Ted lifts weights. We have our verb lifts as our verb. Who are what lifts? We have to ask that question to find our subject of the sentence. In this case, our answer is Ted. Ted lifts weights. Therefore, Ted is the subject of the sentence, the first function of a noun. And obviously, Ted is a person. Therefore, he is a noun functioning as the subject of the sentence. Now, our second function of a noun is functioning as the object in a sentence. Our example here, the same example, um, the same subject of, as an example in the first one is Ted. So we're going to keep using Ted for the three functions. So our example as Ted is the object is, the coach trained Ted. Who did the coach train? Ted. Therefore, Ted is the object of the sentence. Who received the coaching? And we'll learn about direct objects and um, action verbs in, a neck, in um, another module in this course. And our third function of a noun in the sentence is serving as the possessive in the sentence. Ted's coach always arrives early. Whose coach always arrives early? The answer is Ted's coach. So Ted is a noun, obviously that's a person, and um, is showing ownership of the coach. Whose coach is it? It's Ted. Now we have four types of nouns. Again, that's our first part of speech that we need to familiarize ourselves with and be able to identify in a sentence or word group. So our first type of noun is the common noun. It names something general, not specific, and it is not capitalized. So an example here is an actor, soda, a watch, a desk, a pencil. All these are something very general. It's not specific, therefore it's not capitalized. The only time common nouns are capitalized will be when they begin a sentence or question or a piece of dialogue. Our second type of noun is the proper noun. Now this one is the opposite 
of the first noun, we went over the common noun. A proper noun will name something specific, and it is always capitalized, whether it's at the beginning of the sentence or the middle or the end. So proper nouns are always going to be capitalized, unlike your common nouns. And I have some examples here. We have country, um, we have Nigeria, the N is capitalized. We have Burger King, that's a, a restaurant chain, of course, that's capitalized. The name of a, um, a soda company, Pepsi, that's capitalized. And we have Arkansas, the name of a state, that's capitalized. So na a proper noun, which names something very specific, is always going to be capitalized, no matter which um, position it is in the actual sentence. Now our third type of noun is the concrete noun. Now these are some things that we can actually see um, and physically touch. So these are going to be going to be visible to us, and we can t we can touch them and feel them. We have an, some examples here: a car you can physically see and touch. That's a concrete noun. A friend you can physically see and touch that person. That's a concrete noun. A dog, a house, and a door. These are all things that you can actually physically see or physically see and touch. Okay, you can use your your eyes and your hands to see and touch it. So these are concrete nouns. Then our last type of noun is the abstract noun. Now that's the opposite of our third type of noun we just covered. Um, abstract nouns are things that we cannot see or touch. So in other words, an abstract noun is something that we think about. It's an idea. Okay, example here, justice. We can actually see or physically touch justice. That's an idea. So that's an abstract noun. Honesty, friendship, loyalty. We can actually touch somewhere. We can't touch loyalty somewhere. That's an idea. Uh, we can't touch honesty. We can't physically put our hands on honesty. So that's an abstract noun. And of course, friendship is an abstract noun. We can't physically touch friendship. We can physically touch a friend, but not friendship itself. Okay. Now, our second part of speech that I want to focus on is the pronoun, okay? which is a little bit different from what we just went over with the noun. A pronoun is a word that takes the place of a noun. It can be used as the subject of a sentence, the object, or the possessive of the sentence. So it does have the same three functions as a noun actually does. So let's look at the three functions of a pronoun. Again, pronouns take the place of a noun in a sentence. And we have three functions just like the noun. We have the subject, the object, and the possessive. So our first function of a pronoun is acting as the subject of the sentence. And we have a, a sentence example here. And it will look familiar to you because I use, I'm going to use the same examples. I'm just going to change the actual proper um, name, which we had Ted in the first example for nouns. And now I'm going to change his name into a pronoun. So you will see these sentences from the previous examples. He lifts weights. Lifts is our verb of the sentence. Who are what lifts? He lifts. So he is the subject of the sentence. He's doing the lifting. And he takes the place of Ted in our previous example when we talked about nouns as subjects of sentences. Our function number two of a pronoun, it functions as the object of a sentence. The coach trained him. Who did the coach train? He trained him. So him is the object pronoun that took the place of Ted in our previous sentence from nouns. Then our third function of a pronoun is serving as the possessive. His coach always arrives early. Whose coach always arrives early? His is the pronoun that's taking possession of the coach. And that the his in this sentence takes the place of Ted's that we talked about in a previous example when we talked about nouns and sentences. Okay. Now I do want to give you a list of common pronouns so that you can kind of keep um, in your memory bank, store it in your minds now. It starts with I and it ends with what. So these are just the list of common pronouns for your own personal use so that you can start familiarizing yourselves with these pronouns or these words so that you know that when they're in a sentence or a word group you can say, oh, I know you is a pronoun, a second person pronoun. So as you can see, we talked about our first two parts of speech in writing, which are the noun and the pronoun. 
Okay, now the next lessons in these modules will cover verbs and adverbs as well as prepositions and conjunctions. Because again, we have to familiarize ourselves and be able to identify the basic common parts of speech before we can get into more complex sentences. Um, and before we can actually start picking out subjects and verbs and sentences and making compound and complex sentences. So we have to get our foundation first. Thank you.